These medications, similar to conventional sleeping tablets, are always uh, recommended to take for short durations. And we're in the order of three weeks would be a fairly typical recommendation. And that might be uh, predictable instances of insomnia, such as in jet lag or in shift work, or in periods where there may be heightened stress or anxiety. Where we have concerns, of course, is if we have more chronic insomnia syndromes and then there's a reliance on medication, which is in fact often the case. Most people, when they consult their GP, are more likely to receive a pharmacological solution than some strategies around sleep hygiene or cognitive behavioural therapy. Uh, the difficulty, of course, with chronic insomnia is that lack of sustainability. Patients will relapse to their original degree of insomnia. So it seems as though it doesn't provide a sustainable benefit in terms of relapse back to the original state once coming off the medication. Secondly, of course, it can actually cause difficulty coming off, coming off the medication because of the potential for a rebound effect or, uh, or a withdrawal response. And so these um, medications, they have to be uh, reduced rather gradually in order to avoid that. There's a perception that these Z drugs are actually harmless and don't have any risks around dependence or tolerance, but in reality they have the potential to be quite harmful. And so medication, although commonly prescribed, even the medical people I know and the literature reflects it's not the best solution long term.